It's a passion for agriculture. It's a passion for what I do. I don't have an occupation. My life is what I do, and that's this farm. I think one of the key things that a lot of us don't realize is how blessed we are with the resources that we have. When I say resources, I'm saying the climate, the land, the environment that we have here, and the ability to take those uh, and manage those for the benefit not only of my family, but also then for society. We're managing that day to day. It's not from some C-suite in a foreign country. It is you know, right here on the farm. We want to make sure that it has that generational aspect. I think my father and grandfather had that same where they taught me that stewardship. My very first memory, as best I can tell, is sitting in a feed cart full of sow feed, feeding sows in the farring house that's right behind us that's been converted to a nursery. I can also remember wanting my pants to be as dirty as my dad's and the rest of the guys on the yard, so I'd pick up gravel and rub it on my jeans. Minnesota is the second largest pork producing state, and, and here uh, all of our farms are family farms from small, medium to large. And so I think that, that direct connection to the communities where they farm, when you think about sustainability, they really put themselves into that, that position and making sure that they're doing the right things, not just now for creating opportunities for their businesses, which is what pig farms are, but also being good neighbors and being good stewards of the land and the resources they use. My dad never had a containment uh, for manure. It was just outside. And so we wanted to contain those nutrients, keep it in an engineered contained pit that it can't go anywhere until I put it there. We use science to be able to tell us how many gallons of manure put on there so that we kind of know how many bushels of corn that we can raise, but also then that phosphorus and potassium is coming along with it, which are nutrients that are needed to raise that crop. We'll actually then follow up uh, on variable rate spread where we'll put additional phosphorus or additional potassium only if needed to be able to grow that crop. Swine farmers make sure that they're protecting the environment, that they're holding the welfare of the animals at highest regard, one of the most important assets a farm has. And they're doing that not just by improving housing, but also manure management. These are constantly improved and adjusted in a way where we now know what kind of nutrients are contained in manure so that the manure go from the animal to the crop without affecting in any negative way the environment. The reason we build a facility like this, we're standing on uh, a slatted floor. So when these pigs urinate or defecate, their manure will go directly through the floor and into an eight foot deep sealed concrete pit. The manure that's underneath this floor isn't a waste product to me, it's a valuable resource. The feed that we give these pigs is, is grown right here in uh, Southwest Minnesota. So the manure that I put in this pit doesn't go anywhere until I want it to go somewhere. We core sample this pit, send it to a wet chemistry lab to analyze for nitrogen content, phosphorus content, potassium content, and some micronutrients as well. Then we grid sample the field and we apply the exact right amount of manure to the exact right acre, right acre of the field to raise corn and soybeans for next year's crop and for the feed that we're gonna make. We're actually going through a major change here. We're going to a strip-till practice here where we're leaving that 20 inches uh, untilled in between here. If there's a piece of the two and a half acres that doesn't need nitrogen, we don't put it on there. If there's a piece that doesn't need phosphorus, we don't. We are as efficient as we can with those uh, uh, nutrients on how we grow that next crop here. And I'm not just telling you, I can prove it to you. Farmers take great pride into optimizing the conditions of their farm and then proudly handing it over at some point to the next generation. That's a very inherent part of farming and one that I'm also very proud of. When I think about the Spronk family, I really care about their community, really care about the people that come alongside them in their business. That openness 
to what they're willing to try and do in the name of constant improvement is really rewarding. That's a common theme you'll see in pig farmers in the Midwest is, like I said, their name's on the door and that matters. And so they put all their whole selves into trying new things, constantly improving and doing the right things for pigs, people, and the planet. I say it often, uh, most of the time with a smirk on my face. I hope to be raising pigs for the rest of my life unless I mess it up. I, I do truly mean that, right? Every day when I'm making a decision, it's, it's the goal to keep this farm moving for decades and decades, generations and generations. You know, whether you're a beef farmer, a dairy farmer, a pig farmer, a crop farmer, it is that generational part of it here. In other words, where that knowledge and passion from one generation to the next is passed on, it is everyday lessons that are given to that next generation. I still got some opportunity to instill more into Seth. I don't know that he needs it anymore because he's exceeded uh, me in what, how should I say, he needs to do or what he wants to do. Uh, but no, as long as I can live and breathe, uh, I'll be part of it.